Hi folks and welcome to the video. In this one I want to have a little try these. Okay, so what these are are Diodario NYXL strings and uh, I've heard a lot of rave reviews about them, how they, uh, well I'll read the bump for you. Uh, Diodario NYXL strings will bend further, sing louder and stay in tune better than any other guitar string ever made. Uh, you're about to hear more clearly than ever before. Get ready for your encore. Um, them's bold words. And it then goes on to say um, the specifics, anyway, the result is something you'll have to hear to believe, with 6% more magnetic permeability for higher output in the 1 to 3.5 kilohertz range. So, okay, bold claims there, Diodario, and I used to use Diodario strings while I lived in London, and at the time I think I was only paying something like £4 for a pack, 3 99 something like that, and... Um, yeah, it was great. I came back to North Wales and uh, for some reason they were, they were sort of like six, seven, eight pound and uh, good old Ernie Balls were not. So I kind of switched to those and I gigged with them and I touch wood, never actually broke a string. So yeah, pretty happy about that. Um, but let's give them a go. Um, so at the moment I have on this guitar um, a set of Ernie Ball regular slinky 10 to 46s. It's a Gibson Les Paul standard 2012 edition. Um, I have changed the bridge pickup because um, I found that the the one that they put in at the factory um, I've shown you in a separate video. I'll put the uh, magic link. Over here, um, and that one you can kind of hear the difference to the guitar. Now um, we'll go for clean on the bridge pickup, and it's a Seymour Duncan Custom Custom with the Ernie Balls through the Marshall 30th Anniversary 6101. Uh, we're on the bridge pickup, uh, which is a Seymour Duncan Custom Custom in the bridge. Uh, I'm very fond of this pickup. The, came, the one it came with, I think, is a uh, Gibson uh, Burst Bucker Pro and they're scatter wound or something. But basically, to me, that kind of sounded um, over bright, you know, like, like the presence was all the way up on the amp all the time. Uh, and I was always trying to back it away, rolling the tone off a little bit, which kind of fixed it, but it, it was lacking something else. So I switched to the Custom Custom, which I'm far more happy with. So here we are, just clean um, on the first channel. <laughs> pick up there it's slightly out of tune that is one thing with Ernie Balls on my um, Floyd Rose type guitars the Ibanez with the Edge Pro 2 system uh, the Edge Pro original system on uh, this uh, floral here from 88 rock solid all the way through I barely ever have to touch it same again on the 7 uh, V white with the Edge Pro 2 original, or Low Edge Pro, uh, again, completely stable tuning, but on the Les Paul, for whatever reason, uh, it seems to drift a little. We'll do a little bit of... Uh and we'll put both pickups on, and... Uh Let's 
so that's clean. Move over to the crunch channel on the Marshall, which is one of my favourite crunches. Uh, back to the bridge pickup and. Uh, <laughs> sound dull, that's for sure. Pretty nice, and we'll go over to the screaming lead. Um, what I'll do is I'll switch the motif you can straight away. today so switching scale length for the video and it's, uh, it's a little odd. I don't feel I need any more sort of one to three and a half K on the gems especially the one with the Evo pickups that it seems to have a lot. So what I'm going to do now is uh, take off these, I'll probably keep them as spares and uh, switch over to these. Right so we're back with the uh, guitar again uh, and hopefully didn't move the seat too much otherwise I will be out of focus. Um, <coughs> So I put the strings on, um, the felt seat did seem to break in pretty damn fast, I have to say. Um, I wasn't expecting them to break in as quick as that. Um, pretty much by the time I put all of them on, the low E was completely in tune. Uh, I put it through the polytune, yeah, no problem. So here we are, back on the clean. <laughs> That is brighter in the 1 to 3.5k range. Uh, I'm in the room with it, I've got it mic'd up with the SM57, nothing has changed on the amp, the position of the mic or anything else I'm recording with, um, so we shouldn't see any differences other than the ones the strings are making. The only balls that were actually on the guitar had only been on for about two weeks, so without gigging I probably wouldn't have changed them anyway. If I was gigging, well, yeah, maybe. Uh, depending on how sweaty the gig got, you know. go over to channel 2, we'll start off in uh, B mode. <laughs> Let's 
switch into C mode, which is more dirt, more gain. <laughs> tune them and it doesn't it's staying in tune. I'm gonna do that again and see. Major third band. going to be sat here saying they're as stable as anybody else's string. No, they are really stable. I would not change a string at a gig and go for a bend like that. I just wouldn't do it, but I might now. So... <laughs> about guys that's a Jim Dunlop Jazz 3 pick uh, it's a millimeter thick <laughs> oh,